Hello and welcome to the Guna Ramble. This is Rick and I want to apologize to everyone for the schedule interrupt us yet again, but I was on a bit of a golfing holiday. I've returned to find Akil has been quite busy himself. He and the AST hosted Arsenal legend Bob Wilson at their meeting earlier this week, where I believe I saw Akil got to play the role of goalpost during one of Bob's demonstrations. I think some would say that's a role Akil might excel at. Anyway, Akil had the opportunity to speak with former Arsenal player Jeremy Aliadier. Now, Akil didn't have much confidence that I was going to be able to pronounce his name properly, so if I did get it correct, be sure to abuse the heck out of him. If I got it wrong, though, you can abuse me at Golf and Gooner, but keep in mind I am an American and speaking French is not my forte. See what I did there? Uh, anyway, sorry. Let's get on with the interview. Here is Akil with uh, Jeremy Aliadier. Hi, Jeremy. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Yeah, we're excited to have you here. And, and we kind of, we're doing this, uh, a few months after the most recent Legends game, um, against Real Madrid at home, which, which obviously Arsenal won on penalties. You, you actually played in both legs. Um, so tell us, what, what was that experience like? I mean, I, I remember I spoke to you, uh, in the press launch, um, before the home leg and you were quite excited about playing. I think, I think there was a little bit about you wanted to make sure you played up front for a little while as well, not at right back, <laughs> uh, which, which you did, which you did. And, and, and so how was the experience both away from home and at home? Oh, it was great. It was a fantastic experience. Um, you know, like I said, when I've, uh, when I've met you before, um, before the game, I was, uh, you know, I was very excited getting back to the, to the Emirates Stadium and and playing in front of the of the Arsenal fan again. Uh, but yeah, no, it was great. I managed to play up front, as you said, a little bit at the end. Um, but to be honest, it's such for you know for such a great cause that you just you know you'll play wherever the team kind of uh, needs you, you know. And and as I'm uh, I'm the youngest player there, I can't really you know complain. I've got to play where. Where I've, uh, I've I got told to play, so but yeah, no, it was it was fantastic experience. It was great, and uh, it was really nice to see all the uh, all people, you know, buying tickets and, and and coming to see us. Yeah, I mean, you you talked about kind of being the youngest. I think that was evident with your pace. There was one at the Emirates, wasn't there? At the end, when you literally stole it off the defender and just just couldn't get get the ball at the back of the net. But I mean, you you certainly still have it in your legs. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm only, well, not only, but, you know, I'm only 35. So, you know, I still feel, to be honest, I could, uh, I, I could still play at a decent level, but it's just, you know, circumstances, you know, family, things like that, that kind of made me retire a bit younger than, I, than I've expected. But, um, you know, I'm happy now in my life and, uh, and yeah, as I said, I'm I'm the youngest one, so um, so you <laughs> know I had to, to play I had to play right <laughs> back, and I had to show it physically that I could still run 90 minutes, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, with the Arsenal injury crisis, sometimes at the back you may get called. You never know to come out <laughs> out of retirement. If Jens Lehmann can do uh, it, then. <laughs> but I mean, okay. So talking a bit more seriously about your Arsenal career, I mean. You know, many fans would would obviously. I think most fans would remember you well. Would certainly remember you know certain performances like at Anfield in that in that was it six six one six two was it uh, when Julio Baptista six, six, six three six three, yeah. three when Julio Baptista obviously scored scored four goals. Um, you yeah. opened the scoring that day. I mean that that was obviously a, a, a major highlight. But I mean generally, how would you evaluate your kind of Arsenal career? Well, you know, obviously, uh, I, I wish I could have stayed longer and and play obviously more games and and really uh, really make my mark at the club. You know, unfortunately, at the time when when I joined the club and, and them eight years I've had at the club, it was probably the the toughest time for youngsters to kind of to kind of get in a starting eleven and and, and get in the team. You know, as we had Thierry Henry, Denis Bergkamp, Canu, Will Todd, all them guys. That's you know, there. So, um, <laughs> so it was always, it was always, always going to be tough for me to uh, to get in the team. But you know, and and saying that as well, I've had I've had a couple of bad injuries during my time there, which never helped because every time I felt that I was close to the first team and and you know, getting some games, I I used to uh, you know get bad injuries, a crucial ligament or or you know, which take you out six months, and then the time you get back, you know, people. 
big club like Arsenal don't don't wait for you. So you know you're out for six months. You, you obviously some other players come in and and take your space, kind of. So um, you know I, I must say I've, I've obviously loved my time at the club. You know it's the club I love and support since since I was a kid. So uh, being able to join that club in '99 and and spend eight years was uh, was great. You know and and played with all them. Them, them unbelievable players uh, was was fantastic, but you know, like I said, I wish I could have stayed longer and 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 play more. But you know, this is this is kind of life. You know, sometimes it just doesn't uh, doesn't always work at the best. But um, but I'm still, you know, I'm still grateful to to be able to to play eight years at the club. Yeah, and and take us back to that that night at Anfield that I, I just mentioned because it was it is one of those where it, it still comes on you know Sky and BT still show kind of classic matches and and that's usually up there and I think often I mean when I watch it I always look back and think blimey I think you get better in that game every time I watch it again you know it was just, <laughs> you scored the first but then you you set up a few as well and you were just everywhere I mean what was that night like for you? Oh, that was incredible. But, mm. you know, the thing at, at, at that time for us, you know, I'm not just talking about me, I'm talking about a few of the players in that in that team that night. It was kind of our time to, to shine a little bit because that's, you know, that Carling Cup game, League Cup game back in the day, that that was yeah. the games where we knew we were get we were going to get an opportunity and a chance to to show what we can do. Obviously, when you go and play, uh, you know, Anfield, Liverpool, you just kind of think, oh my God, you know, if they, if they put a strong team, uh, it's just going to be a very difficult game for us. But, you know, at, at, at the end, we just kind of, I remember it really well. We just traveled in the morning as well, kind of not taking it very, very seriously. Like we yeah. used to when, when with Arsenal, we used to just travel every year. Uh, you know, every day before the game, mm. you know, and, and stay at night in the hotel. But that day, we, we just decided to travel in the morning and just went to the hotel and played the game in the evening. But it kind of, straight from the beginning, as soon as, you know, kickoff went, we just, we, we all like kind of felt good. Like yeah. All the players just performed really well and we all felt we were in good form. Good, And then it just kind of clicked. And, you know, first goal came quite quickly. Then then, Second, and then you just think, oh my god, this is just going to be an incredible, you know, incredible yeah. game and, and evening. Not just obviously for us, but even like you said, people that are not particularly Liverpool or Arsenal fan, they all kind of remember that game because because yeah. that was a, you know, one of the never really see any big scores like this, you know, yeah. Arsenal or uh, Liverpool Arsenal. So, but yeah, no, it was just it yeah. was just amazing. Probably like you said, one of the best game of my of my old career not just yeah. my Arsenal career yeah yeah, and I think I think the travelling was because I think we had played them in the FA Cup a few days before I think we, we went to Anfield like twice in five days or something um, yeah because we, and, and we won both as well so I think in that League Cup game we were all a bit taken back because we thought oh, Liverpool are going to come at us now we've just knocked them out of the FA Cup um, but it was yeah it was just an incredible night wasn't it <laughs> it um, was yeah it was you, you talked a little bit earlier about kind of, you know, it, it was a tough time for a youngster to come through, um, certainly playing up front with, with, with Henri and, and Burkamp and Canu and Will Todd and all that kind of stuff. But take me back to kind of your, your, your first day at Arsenal, when you first kind of, you know, started to work with, with, with Arsene Wenger, when you kind of started to, to, to work with, you know, the likes of Henri and Burkamp. I mean, how was that? Was it kind of, did they make it really easy for you? Was it was it a tough kind of first week or two where you thought, what am I doing here? What 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 was the experience like? Well, to 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 be honest, it's kind of they they've always made it really easy for me. It was me kind of felt too much pressure, you know. It was just like I didn't feel I didn't feel I had my my place with them kind of guys, you know. And it took me a while to kind of figure out and realize that I actually was good enough to be with them guys and and I was talented enough to be part of that of that squad but when I joined the club in 99 I was I was only 16 so I was not a professional because yeah. you can only be professional from 17 years old so so when I joined in uh, in August um, 1999 I've, um, I was with the academy for the first seven eight months until I turned 17 so 
basically at the beginning, I was I was not even training with the first team, so I was nowhere near Arsene Wenger or or Thierry or all them guys. I was just with the academy with the like of Jermaine Pennant, uh, Jerome Thomas, Stephen Sidwell, all them guys. So obviously coming from France, didn't speak any English. That was that was quite tough for me, you yeah. know, at the beginning. Mm. The first the first seven eight months, I was really struggling. Mm. And uh, and obviously I turned 17, then then changed from the academy dressing room to the first team dressing room. Then obviously you just you know you join the dressing room where you've got a lot of French players, so they've kind of all took me up as the little uh, the little brother that come in you know coming up. So all the yeah. French guys, you know Thierry, Patrick, Patrick was just fantastic with me. You know he was. Uh, he was always, you know, really helping anything I needed. He was, he was always there for me. So, uh, you know, they've, they've made it as, as easy as, as he could, really. It was more me that psychologically and, and, and in my head, I was kind of a little bit too shy and a bit too respectful in a certain way of, of, yeah. of being with them guys, you know. So uh, it felt, you know, it felt a bit hard for me. And that's why I think it kind of took me a bit of time to play my first game and, and to 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 kind of go, get involved even on the bench, you know, even as a substitute, it took a bit of time for me to to get in the squad and stuff because in training I kind of didn't really I didn't take any risk. I didn't really show what I was capable of doing individually. I was always kind of wanting to just play in one touch, give balls to them guys and not really take responsibility and try to do, you know, my thing. So um I guess you know we all. That's my kind of my character, my my, my you know my mentality and stuff. So that's, yeah. it's always uh, always difficult, you know. Kids, uh, you know, that age, we're all different. Some are very mature and 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 mentally so strong, you know, and that's why they play at the top level so young. But and some others are just a bit more, you know, it feel a bit more difficult for them. Yeah, and I mean, a few of the players you mentioned have now gone on to kind of become managers, you know, Patrick Vieira and, and obviously Thierry's just started and potentially hasn't been the best start for him at Monaco, but obviously it is his first real management job, so I'm sure sure people will grow or, or he'll grow into it. But just generally from that era, you know, we talk about leadership quite a lot um, in, in football and, and we always refer to that stage where you were there about, you know, there were seven or eight leaders on the pitch and, and Unai Emery recently has said, you know, he wants five captains and stuff like that. I mean, how important important is leadership um in that team right you know admittedly you've just said that you were maybe a bit more shy and and stuff like that but how important is having those strong leaders in that team oh it's massive it's so important you know and 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 like like you just mentioned you you don't need just one leader because because one's not enough these days you know you you need you need few on the pitch you need you you, need to be honest, you know, at the end of the day, you need you need players that are responsible and and a leader of themselves as well, you know. And and that's what we had uh, back in the days. Obviously, we had Tony Adams, Martin Keown, and Patrick. But I guess the players players like Robert Pires, for example, Ian Ian a leader. He, he was not a leader talking, but he was a leader on the pitch by yeah. what he showed and, so and what he, you know he took he, you know by example and what mm. he took his responsibility and. And and you know and and that's what sometimes you kind of lack like these days is is obviously we talk about leader we need somebody that that is vocal and and it's not just that you know we had both we had people that were vocal and could you know shout and 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 you know kind of motivate players and we had other players that didn't really speak or but they they, they were performing they were showing by by attitude and by 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 action that they were leaders as well uh, and and obviously at that time you know you think about all the players they were all kind of leaders you know in a certain way um but at that time i think that that squad it, it was like everybody kind of knew what they had to do and and what was their place in that squad you know we've never had any argument we've never had any fight or any any kind of ego of of uh, his, you know, the press are more liking this player or that player. It's kind of everybody were together, and then we all knew 
we had all a part to play in that squad, you know, and 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 that's what made it so so great, you know. Yeah, and you kind of uh, back to that sort of legends game. You you played with a few of them again, so you know uh, Ray Parler, David Seaman, Robert Perez, and then a few potentially you might not have played with too long, but 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 you you certainly knew. Um, I mean, did did it feel like did those sort of you know now the players have retired, they've they've moved on to different things, but when they got back in that dressing room, did it feel a little bit like? This is like every the personalities were the same as they were playing, or or or, or was it visibly quite different now? And and was that competitive edge quite, not quite there? No, nah, that competitive you've got it in you, yeah, mm. yeah. You can't, you know, this is this is inside you for forever. When you've played at the at top level and and played some, you know, very important game with with uh, an important of the result, and uh, like you don't you don't. You can't take it out of yourself, you know. Obviously, when you all, we all see each other, we're in the dressing room. It's all like nice, happy, you know. There's, you can see there's no pressure of the result and no yeah. pressure of of we're not playing for anything. But you know, it's like a fun day out. It's like a. But when you get on that pitch, you want to win. You want to do your best. You want to. You want to get first. If there's a challenge to get, you know, win. You want to win it. You know, and and then you saw a few, few tough challenges if you like hot tackle as well and that kind of show you that you know it doesn't matter what age how fit how not fit you are you, you when that ball's there you want to win it you want to win the game you want to and and that that competitivity is, is still in in each of us really you know it doesn't matter what age we are yeah and there's one more kind of memory from your arsenal career i think it, it, we, we would we have to talk about um Bearing in mind, we've drawn Tottenham Hotspur in the uh, League Cup quarterfinals now. So I'm going to take you back to uh, a semi-final, I think it was. It was in the second leg. Um, we went into extra time. It was, it was. I think it was. Was it 2007? Maybe was it 2007? It uh, was. Yeah, it was. The, well, it was the same year of uh, of that Liverpool game. So yeah, okay. it was. Uh, it was 2007 because that that um, that was my last season at the club. Mm. So uh, yeah, I left in uh, in July 2007. Yeah. So yeah, so- it was just before that. Because you you scored uh, in extra time, and I remember it. And and bearing in mind the Emirates Stadium was was very new, that was probably the first game where I think there was a bit of an atmosphere. It felt a little bit special. I think up to then, games were you know we we obviously potentially didn't have the best start at the Emirates in the league, and and you know we were still getting used to moving from Highbury to to the Emirates. But that night, I remember the atmosphere was just electric. I mean, what 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 do you remember from that game? Yeah, no, you're right. I remember it clearly. It was well, it was a semi-final after beating Liverpool in core finals. We obviously get yeah. Spurs, you know, Spurs in the <laughs> in semi-final, and I, and I can remember the the first leg uh, playing there. We were two 0 down, and I came off at half time because I got a knock. I came off, yeah, and second half we managed to get it back to two two. Uh, and then I remember thinking, oh my God, this is like, this is just the proper, like, we got, we got luck, not lucky, but that's a godsend, you know, that we can, we've managed because I thought after two nil half time, I thought we done, you know, not even one playing second leg is going to be tough. And getting back to two, two, I thought, oh my God, that second game is just going to be crazy. I, I, I need to be back for this game, you know, it's going to be crazy. And, and it was the atmosphere at the Emirates was, like you said, it was the first season at the Emirates, obviously, fan were kind of taking the mark there, but yeah. that that was yeah, like you said, probably the first game where it was so important for for the fan. You know, as as you know, when we play against Tottenham, it's always a a massive game, but to play them in semi final like this, and and knowing we had, you know, we we could potentially go in, go into the final, even if it's only Carling Cup, it's, you know, it's silverware, it's a cup, yeah, so. Yeah. I, yeah, it was. Yeah, I remember the. I remember the game, and I re- obviously remember scoring. That was yeah, another, another fantastic feeling, you know. And it's one of those things that if you you score against Spurs in an Arsenal shirt, fans don't forget that. Fans remember that yeah. because it's just yeah, that's how much sure. it means. And then we obviously move on to the final, uh, which I think you started. I think did Adebayo come on for you near the end? Did yeah, you... Adebayo came on at about. I can't, I can't remember exactly minutes, what minute, though, 70, yeah. 80, yeah, I would say. 
Yeah, yeah I remember really well because it was Phil Walker's first goal for the of club. Of course it was, uh, yeah, he scored first. Yeah, uh, he scored first and I actually thought we were going to do it. When I saw mm. Phil score, then we were one day up. I thought, oh my God, they have put their strongest team out yeah. and we still had the we still had the kind of no starting eleven, the weakest team if you if you want to call it this way. But it was just yeah, it was just it was incredible. Team, I thought, oh it? my it god. Team, it yeah. was a younger team, yeah. yeah. And and uh, and obviously, yeah, like you know, I was just so disappointed to to lose um to obviously drug bus scoring them uh, yeah. them two goals and uh, yeah, it was uh it was very disappointed. But you know, at the end we I think we've done uh, you know, I don't think anybody kind of expected us no. to do so well in, yeah. in the cup and go to and go that far. So at the end, he was obviously uh, disappointed to lose because you you know we've done all them effort and won all them games to, yeah. to lose in the final. It's never great, but at the end, it was uh, it's always been a fantastic memory. I still have mm-hmm. the you know the, the the DVDs here, and I always yeah. show it to my kids, and yeah. you know, and it's just yeah, it's it's awesome. Yeah, and 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 after that, I mean, what what did Arsene Wenger say to you guys after that? Because obviously, it's it's important uh, from a management point of view that you, the confidence of these young players doesn't, you know, isn't impacted. But I mean, how did how did everyone recover? Because I, I remember that game, and I remember going back from Cardiff quite disappointed because you know we we we. And then, yeah, you know, we hadn't won a trophy for a few years. So it was about two years. First one at the Emirates, potentially. Um, there was a lot of disappointment there. I mean, how did how, how did Arsene Wenger deal with that? Well, it's, it's it kind of deadly in the zone where where you know it was a very young team they put out from from the first round, and he was just like, guys, you know, at the end of the day, we we played really well. We could have could have won the game but we've played against it, obviously a very strong Chelsea team and and more experience that's probably what on that day we kind of missed uh, and and you know it's just football life really you know you've got finals you win some you lose some I guess but I think he was he was more proud of what we've achieved yeah, to get yeah. to the final than, than disappointed that we've uh, we've lost that final you know but Listen, it's, it'll always be a disappointment because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you're a young team, not young team, you know, you, you, you play for Arsenal Football Club, which is, yeah. you know, one of the biggest clubs. So you can't just find excuses about, oh, well, they had the strongest team we didn't, you know, you, mm. each the final you want to win it and, and we didn't. So um, obviously, you know, like you say, you, you're disappointed and then... Uh, and then as, as everybody, I guess, when you lose a final, you just got kind of, try to forget about it even if you you know yeah. you can't really forget but try to move on and, and think mm. about the next game you know with with the Carling Cup as well it's so early in the season still you still yeah. got a lot of Premier League games to play after that then we couldn't really you know let ourselves like down and you know we had a, we had a game to play the week after in the, in the Premier League that was that was important as well. So um, yeah, kind of had to had to move on quite quick. So, yeah. And then, as you kind of rightly said earlier, that was that was your last season, and and you moved on in the summer. I mean, uh, how was that feeling? Was it was it one of you know you, you felt you had to make the move? What 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 were your thoughts around that? Uh, you know, it's, it's it's always it's always a kind of a difficult like difficult time for me, even talking about yeah. it because. Now that I've retired, and not just now, but even a few years ago, that that I knew what happened uh, after I've left. Obviously, you know, if if I could redo it, I would not probably leave. I'll, I'll stay. But I I can remember the the feeling that I had yeah. at the time was was uh, Jeremy. You know, uh, you've got to go. You've you know, I, I know you you don't want to leave the club. But you've got to go. You've got to go somewhere where you can play week in week in the Premier League. Because you know I was 24 at the time, and, yeah. and then you just you know 24. I was on the bench all the time and just coming on. And the only game that I was kind of know I was gonna really start was Carling Cup and then sometimes FA Cup at the beginning. But over game, I had to wait for Thierry to be injured or or Robin to be injured or yeah. you know, and, and it was it was difficult to. to you know, how much longer could I be patient? You know, and 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 obviously I got to that stage where I've had a good season in the term of scoring goals in the Carling Cup, playing them games. So my profile were quite high at the time. Mm. 
So I just thought this is an opportunity for me maybe to, to move on to a Premier League club and, 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 and to be able to, to get the opportunity that, that I want, you know, and, uh, yeah. and, and I, you know, listen, I could have, I was supposed to leave that January, uh, okay. to Middlesbrough and Robin got injured. He, he done his, um, uh, fifth metatarsal on his feet, yeah. on his foot. So then Arsene just went straight after the next day. He said, Jeremy, you know, I know you want to leave, but you aren't going to leave now. Robin got injured. Like, we need you till the yeah. rest of the season at least. And yeah. then we'll talk about it. So obviously I, I just stayed at the club for that, for that, which obviously was great because that's when we played, you know, the Liverpool final. Spurs yeah. and yeah. went the final. And so, you know, I'm, I'm so happy that in a certain way, Robin got injured because otherwise <laughs> I probably would have gone in January, you know. Yeah, yeah. But then, then, then at the end of that, I just said to, you know, I just said to Wenger, I just said, boss, I'm, I don't want, you know, I don't want to leave, but I feel that I'm kind of forced to leave. You're forcing me to leave by not giving me more opportunity, mm. you know. I can't just stay. Robin has been injured three months and I was not playing more in the Premier League. I was still on the bench because we had Adebayo and Thierry playing up there. Yeah. So I was just like, you know, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna play unless I've got three or five players, and, you know, and yeah. and I just like, I need, you know, I need to move. And at the beginning, he tried to convince me not to go, but then at the end, my mind was kind of set. You know, I wanted to leave already in January because Middlesbrough really wanted me. Gareth Southgate was always calling me and just like, you know, I really want you to come and. And that's why at the end of that season, I, re- I really said to Arsene, listen, you've got to be fair. You've got to really let me go and give me, you know, let, let me have a chance to, yeah. to make a, a career in the Premier League and, and be able to really play week in, week out and not just be a part player, you know. And uh, at the end, he, he kind of, he knew that he didn't have much argument because I've been around the club so many years waiting for my for my chance and never kind of got it. I couldn't wait any longer. But obviously now knowing that at the same time Thierry left. Yeah. Then then obviously he kind of felt that maybe if I stayed I would have got more opportunity, but who knows? You know, who knows? I, I, yeah. nobody knows. So I just, you know, he, yeah. he kind of always think oh maybe if I stayed I would have stayed kind of all my career at Arsenal because that's what I kind of dreamt of when I yeah. joined the club. All I wanted to do is just play be main man up there, play, you know, and then yeah. and then never leave really. But yeah. Sometimes in a career you kind of got to leave yeah. uh, to to find times, you know, to find games, minutes on the pitch. So yeah, yeah no, fair enough, and and you know, thanks for being so honest there as well. Um, you've you've obviously now sort of retired. Um, you you do a bit of pundit work. You 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 came back to train with Arsenal, didn't you, a few years ago as well? Was it? I did, did you, yeah. It was yeah. uh it was it was uh, oh nice no, few years ago. Basically yeah. after Middlesbrough, um I got badly injured uh, yeah. and I was without a club. I was supposed to sign for West Ham and and uh, uh it's a bit of a long story, but I was supposed to sign and they find something on one of my medical scans where I've never had any injuries okay. in you know, that, that that in that part of my body and, mm. and I think they you know, I'm not sure if that was really true or what, but they've, mm. uh, they've asked me to train with them, which I did, and training with them without signing any document or any contract, I got injured and, mm. uh, and badly damaged my knee. So I end up without a club for, for one year, you know, having to yeah. uh, do a rehab and, 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 and then Middlesbrough been really kind, to be fair, because they've, they've talked me back to, to help me out basically to get my rehab sorted and yeah. then get back fit and as soon as I got back fit um, I tried to obviously get get to a club find a find a club which was you know kind of difficult at the time so that's that's the time I spoke to Arsene and asked him if I could uh, if I could get get back to the training ground get fit again and 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 you know and hopefully if I train with Arsenal and people hear that I'm back fit uh, then then people will come and sign me which which obviously did happen you know yeah. I've trained with uh trained with Arsenal for about four months and at the end of that season I signed for Lorient back in Lorient. France yeah. which uh, which was uh, which was obviously I was so happy because I, I never you know when you're injured without a club for a year you get every kind of thought get through your mind thinking yeah. am I going to get a club am I yeah. going to play football again am I going to you know maybe this is it I think this, this is it. I'm never going to play again or you know so yeah. I'll, I'll always be grateful to the club and to Arsenal for 
for giving me the opportunity to you know to get back to the club and train with the boys and 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 get back to a really good fitness level and uh and playing some reserve game as well which I was not even contracted with the club you know but also let me play free reserve game as well yeah. to, for for people to see that I was uh, that I was back That's playing and, yeah. and fit yeah. yeah so um yeah, yeah. no so so what what I mean your your relationship with Arsenal has always then been quite healthy and stuff and and now you're kind of doing a little bit of kind of pundit work and stuff. I mean what what generally what are you up to now Jeremy? What's 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 Jeremy Aliade's life now like? Well, my my life is like, you know, some some weeks are really busy with like you said punditry radio uh, you know all kind of media work and some of a week when there's no much going on like this week international week there's not much going on so yeah, it's yeah. a bit more quiet i'm more like a you know a normal dad that take his kids to football and take yeah. his kids to school and you know do the daddy uh do your children play duty. do your children play football my, my little boy do yeah my little yeah. son uh, i've got one girl one boy they both play even my daughter uh-huh. plays but she's just uh she's just playing more for you know, fun. more for the school and for yeah, fun yeah. with the friends. My my boy is really competitive. He's only okay. six, but he wants to be the best. He's uh, oh good. Yeah, he's oh yeah, he's he's really <laughs> focused. Just that's, that's what he wants to do. You can you can see already. So uh, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. But obviously, you know, like when I got the when I got the call from uh, from the media uh, side at Arsenal, yeah. I was yeah. you know this it was just kind of like oh my god, you know get get back to the club in, in any kind of yeah, capacity. way. It was, yeah. just, it was just amazing for me. So, uh, you know, I've, I've started at the beginning of season doing some uh, core commentary for the Arsenal Nation and the, the media. And it's just fantastic. I really enjoy it. It's got such a great team of people there. And, and it's so nice to be back at the Emirates on, the, on you know, match day and see the fans yeah. and, and get in the stadium. And, you know, you just feel that you're part of the club again, which is... Uh, which is great. Yeah. Great. Well, I mean, thank you for, for spending the last sort of half an hour with us. And I think, you know, it was really interesting hearing, you know, your stance on your Arsenal career and, and, and about all those kind of legendary players you played with. So, you know, we wish you the best of luck. Glad you're back at Arsenal doing, doing, doing some work. And, and, you know, we, you were on the pitch at half time a few, well, a few months ago, wasn't it? And, so we'll yeah. hopefully see you a lot more, see you in Legend Games, see you commentating. Um, and yeah, we just just want to wish you all the best of luck. Thank you very much. It was uh, really nice talking to you. Thank you. Thanks, Jeremy.